Welcome to another quick hit. I'm your boy, Professional Sutton. I'm your boy, Chris G. So, I had to call you, Chris. So I'm I'm watching um, ESPN, YouTube. I'm watching everything. Um, these two kids from out of San Antonio, um, football players, high school. They tackled one tackled the referee and the other one spared him. Uh, I really, I mean, <clears throat> am I disgusted by it? Sure. But here's when we talk about Chris Carter and that fall guy stuff. Do you think that this was planned by the coaches? Um, I think it could have been planned by the coaches. I mean, I, I, I find it hard to believe that the kids just would have been on their own. They would have said, all right. You know, the ref gave us a bad call. Let's go after him. I think, um, you know, as many years as we played football, I don't think we ever thought about targeting a no, ref. No. Um, but I, I do also think if our coaches would have asked us, you know, to do it, that, you know, he would have known the right guys to ask to do it. Yeah, I, I just I just think that it's very odd um, for two players to just out of nowhere just hit hit the ref like that. And granted, we both played in the inner city when I mean, we played against teams from the suburbs and we did not get a lot of calls our way, i.e. 2001 against Ellington when we coming off an of undefeated season and we go in there our junior year and we lose some touchdowns called back, some holding calls that are not. about three touchdowns called back. Yeah, well, you know, I, I was I was being modest because it was so long ago. Um, no, it was about three. And it was a lot of bad calls and you know, our coach looked at us, Coach Jack looked at us and said, man, they're going to take this game away from y'all. And, uh, you know, he was upset about the way the refs mm-hmm. were, you know, refing that game. Um, they definitely were trying to let Ellington win. But in that same breath, Ax said, you know, we didn't play the way we were supposed to play on top of that. So, yeah, you know, um, you know, I, I think you need to, if it was something, which I think, It was, if it was something that the coaches, you know, told the players to do, you know, shame on the coaches. You know, you got to, you got to instill something better in your kids than that. Yeah. I mean, and see, I want to know the whole aspect of the game. Look, I'm not, you know, negating what these boys did, but playing in a system where, or for for an inner city team, when we don't get a lot of calls our way, you do get frustrated. You do get tired. And who's actually, um, overseeing these referees. I know that they have a governing body, but honestly, are they really, really, really governing a lot of these referees? Um, with that being said, I can see why you can be frustrated as a coach, as a player. You know, you spent countless hours, you know, preparing for a game and for the game to be that close. My thinking is, okay, what did the ref do? How did they officiate the game? Was it a clean game or was it one of those games where it was ticky tacky and they didn't give the players the proper due. Um, so that's what I really want to look at. Should I they mean, be suspended? Yes, they should. But I just think I that. I don't know if the kids should be suspended. No. Here, here where I'm at. I think a full investigation needs to be done. Whether the refs were cheating or whether the refs, you know, were, you know, a little bit of home cooking or whatever the case may be. I don't think you should ever target a ref like that. Mm-hmm. Granted, you know, they might they might have deserved it, but I don't think you should ever target a ref like that. No, no. Um, and then second of all, like I said, I think it needs to be a full investigation instead of just suspending the kids. They suspended the kids from school. Wow. You know, they got a full suspension. And I, I just think we need to know everything behind everything before we just punish the kids. Because yeah. if the coaches ask these kids to do it, then they need to be fired. They I need agree. to be reprimanded. And then, you know what, those kids, you know, need to be dealt with in a different way. Because if the coaches told those kids to do it, then you know what, it's deeper than just suspending the kids. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, there's a lot of unknowns about the story, and I know that um, it's a Labor Day weekend, so it really won't, you know, there's no school today, and, um, you know, all across America. So I know they won't really get, you know, a full story, a full investigation going until probably Tuesday. Mm-hmm. But I just think they need to hold off. Let's get all the sides of the story. Um, and you know what? If the refs were making, you know, home cooking calls or, you know, really officiating badly, 
there is no excuse for them to get, you know, targeted like that. But they need to be dealt with too. Yeah. They need to be dealt with to all parties. I think just everything needs to be looked into before they make, you know, a grand decision or a grand judgment on anything. And and see here's and here's my thing, and, and I could be looked at as a antagonist or as a dummy, I don't care. Um, you have two folks here. You have like also being a coach, you know, you have these referees who do and say what they want to do. And like most people who are, um, I don't want to make it like a racial thing. I I don't, I don't want to make it look like, you know, us versus them. But when you have people who are tired of, you know, being tired then they fight back and this coach might've had it with this ref, you know, this coach might've had it with this whole officiating crew. Like, you know what? I'm going to take matters into my own hands. Cause like you said, a player, who's dedicated to their coach and their team, they will do whatever it takes. They will run through a brick wall for their coach. And um, if that is the case, then I think that, you know, the coach, like you said, should be fired because it's, it's a way to to also coach, um, you know, humility and, you know, respect and discipline. But as a ref, if if we watch the game, because it was a very close game, it's not like it was like 45 to nothing. It was a very close game, I think 15 to 7. So if these refs cost these kids this game, you know, and if it was horrible officiating, you know what? These refs, they need to be suspended at least for, I say, half the season because they really need to know that, you know, someone's watching. And it's horrible that it took this, if that's the case, if if these refs did cost these kids a game. If that's the case, then you know what? That's what you get. But I, yeah. I think that it should be handled in a matter where these kids should be allowed to play football again and, um, you know, some type of suspension is warranted because they still can make the decision. Um, if, well, yeah, some type was. of suspension. I just think, you know, the first thing they did was they said, all right, well, let's suspend the kids. That's something we could do without getting any backlash from anybody. We could just suspend them and we can look at everybody else later. I think they should have put a, put a hold on that. And they said, you know what, let's look at the whole thing. Let's look at the whole game, these calls. Let's look at the coaches. Let's look at the rest. Then let's make a, um overall decision. But what they did was they just said, well, you know what? We'll look at everything on Tuesday, but for right now, we can at least get rid of these kids. Yeah, yeah. And I and I think that was the wrong decision to make. Now, I think when it's all said and done, after, you know, all the information comes out, you know, it, it could be warranted for these kids to be suspended, and it could be warranted for these kids maybe not to play high school football um, in that town anymore. I, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed. You know, I wouldn't be opposed of that. I just want there to be – some type you know, of justification just, for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to be some type of justification other than, well, we could just blame them and put it all on them and nobody, you know, nobody's going to really ask any questions because those were the culprits. But you know what? I, I don't want just the culprits. You know what I mean? I want who, who called the shot, yep. who said, you know what, let's get this done. Now, if they did this independently on their own, then, you know, that's a different, that's a different story. But like I said, you know, I don't think all the facts are out yet. And, um, you know, I guess, you know, time will tell. And, mm -hmm. you know, we'll get to, you know, make our assumptions off of that. But, you know, I just, it's a, I feel like it's a sad day for high school football that mm -hmm. uh, some kids uh, hit a ref. Not that, listen, you know, we've, like I said, we did it for a long time. Not like some refs didn't deserve it. But, yeah. you know, just to actually go through with it, do it, I think, you know, it's a, it's a, that time for it. Yeah, because I mean that if you look at the hit, that ref could have definitely um had some serious injuries um with how he got hit. You know, he wasn't even ready for it, he wasn't prepared for it. And you know, most refs they understand, you know, that's part of the business. You know, we can get hit because um, you know, it's just it's a physical game and they can get, you know, mingled up into it. But how he got hit, um, it, that was kind of cruel. Like I said, I hope that it wasn't called by a coach and I hope that the ref didn't have uh, no contributing factors to it. Um, so my point is, I hope that uh, these kids didn't, I hope that they just did it on their own because if that's the case, if there were some factors into it, then it looks shameful for the game. And, you know, I know recently um, a kid, I think it was in Louisiana or Mississippi, he passed away on the field. So high school football and football in general has a black eye. Um, so anytime the media can find something, they're going to make it look like, you know, it's a barbaric sport and that's how you play. And this is what happens um, because you play football. So I hope that everything is worked out. Um, but I think these kids do, 
to do uh, serve some type of suspension. And also, I hope that, you know, like you said, by Tuesday, Wednesday, we find out the whole story and uh, we can get this resolved. Yeah, I hope so, too. I definitely hope so, too. So, um, time will tell. Yeah, but also, you know, shout out to you, Chris. You know, you uh, we're doing a phone interview because, you know, this is like pressing. I was like, uh, this this is well, really pressing. So I had to hear you. You called and said you want to get a, done, a show, show done over the phone. So, yeah. you know. It's a, it's a day off for everybody, so you know it wasn't really a big deal. Yeah, and it sounds pretty good, too. It sounds pretty good, too. Um, but before we go, I just also want uh, the listeners to know you can also follow us on YouTube, on um, Professional Sutton. Um, That's right. Go look at the YouTube page. Yeah, look at the That's YouTube That's up and page. going now. Yep. We, um, I didn't know how to you know make our own page, so I just did it under Professional Sutton. I'm going to be uploading all the videos, um, all the podcasts up there um, every week, probably a few a week. And um, share, like, and tell your friends, tell a friend to tell a friend. And let's get this thing going. No doubt. No all doubt. Right. So, um, all right, man. I'll see you on the next run. No doubt, man. Peace. Peace.